So hi, this is Stu, and today in Asana School we're going to talk about marriage Asana D. And as you can see, Carolina is in the finished posture, which may look slightly different for different people depending on what's going on in your body. Um, but what we're going to do is break it down and look at the parts that will restrict you getting into the posture, maybe a little bit of technique about how to get in, and uh, where you should be working at, basically, within the posture. So if we bring Carolina out of the posture, the first thing we need to think about is, is bringing whichever leg you're going to bring in. So normally you would be starting with bringing in the, the left leg because that's the way it works within the sequence. But because I'm sitting on this side, we're going to bring in the right leg first. Now some people decide to roll out this leg here a little bit before they bring in this foot which is aiming to be in the crease of the thigh here and as deep in the crease as you can get it um, because then we're hopefully going to avoid too much sickling of the the foot that sickling means if we bring it in it means that sort of movement at the ankle which is not very healthy for the outside of the ankle this might be a personal preference thing for me i find that actually it creates a bit more sickling for my foot when i start with it in that position and then bring it in but you can play with one on the other so we'll start and I think Carolina you do it this way with your legs straight is mm. that right and so Carolina is going to bring in first of all her right foot and she's going to try and get it as much in this crease as possible with her heel much towards the navel as she can get it so bring that foot in first good and this is our first sort of tester if your knee and even in this position is up yeah then you've got to be asking yourselves, uh, should you be going any further than this in this particular posture? Because you need very much opening and external rotation. That's this thigh rolling this way from the hip to actually be able to do this posture to its fullest expression. And if the knee is already starting up, then when you add the other leg into it, it's going to be even higher off the ground. And that can be putting some pressure on the knee. So if it's up, too much, then maybe just put a block here and work with this position and try and think of the thigh opening and do some more external hip rotations outside of the practice to try and get some movement in the hip first and then worry about doing a little bit deeper in this posture. So if you can get this foot nicely in this crease and can we bring that heel this way a little bit? Yeah. Yes, in there. Cool then she can then flex this other knee and bring the foot in. So now, now we're going to go yeah. Yeah, deeper into the posture. And again, this knee wants to be coming down towards the floor. Yeah? So the next thing that we face is actually getting around this knee. So it has to come towards the center line so that you can rotate around it. But you don't want to pull it so far across your body that you're not actually going to twist. Also, we need to think about where this foot is going. When we're a little bit tighter, we have a tendency to stick it out wide, so as it basically it creates a sort of a more acute angle coming across the body, which seems to make it a little bit easier to get around, but it throws off the whole balance of the posture. So we really don't want it to be any much further than sort of level with the outside of that hip, um, and not so close, too close in either, because otherwise, again, you're, you're playing with your balance in the posture. So we want to be able to try and keep this knee down as we actually bind into it. So we're trying to sit up as high as we possibly can and then take this knee a little bit towards the center line. And then while we're sitting up as high as we can, we're going to twist. And now there's a tendency to want to lean forwards a long way. But if we can try and avoid as much of that as possible and try and keep up as high as we can and then take the bind around, good, and it might be that you're binding your hand or your wrist or getting hold of your thigh, and that's really, to me, how deep you bind isn't such a big deal, it's more about how long your arms are relative to the proportions of your body, and it's, I wouldn't sacrifice the depth of the bind for everything else that's going on in the posture. So, if we're trying to protect this knee, for me, this is the most important thing. So we want to actually to be able to take that knee down to the ground. Now that probably will bring our weight forwards a little bit. So now we're going to actually counteract that with trying to 
work this hip to the floor, so the outside hip to the floor. And at the same time, we're pressing with this knee into the back of this shoulder arm if we've got a deeper bind. I didn't really let Carolina get into this very deep, so maybe you want to come out and go back into it again. So I'll let you go without me pushing and prodding you as you're going in. So you can see there that because Carolina didn't get her shoulder past her knee enough, that her, her knee was slipping out underneath her armpit. So you've really got to reach and get that knee behind your shoulder and as far up your arm as possible so that then that leaves you room to actually get your arm around. So this is a major rotation of this arm as it goes behind your back, yeah? And that's, you can see now, she's got herself a lot more space. So now, but of course, she has brought that knee across the center line quite a bit, so she's going to work it towards the outside, sit up as straight as possible, let this knee drop towards the floor. Now this knee, again, some people's knee, I think, will face almost straight forward. Some people's knee will face more out towards the side, maybe about 45, 40 degrees. And I think that is sort of a Again, a personal thing as to what's going on at the, at the ankle and with this thigh, yeah? So once she's in it, what she's trying to do is she's going to keep on merely rotating the shoulder to make sure she doesn't lose the grip, but also pushing with the knee into the arm and the arm into the knee. And then she's going to counteract that with broadening across the chest and drawing this shoulder back and the scapula down her back. And then she should find us have got more room and then at the same time she's lifting up so there's a spiral going on all the time and she's lifting up towards the ceiling at the same time to relax back down into her base so let's bring her out of it before <laughs> she collapses there it can be a posture that people find really difficult to breathe in to start with particularly if it's a very tight bind um, so what you've got to think of this getting the chest through and actually giving your spouse self space and lifting up and breathing into the part of your chest that isn't actually rammed up against your leg will allow you to keep your even breath and it's important not to shorten your breath if you possibly can because that's what's going to give you the space and it's going to give you the ability to lengthen up if we stop start puffing and panting then what tends to happen is we just all become a little bit tight and we like spring out of it like a, a bungee cord or something when it's all over. So let's start thinking about some of the things that, that went on there and some of the things that might actually uh, stop this posture being expressed to the fullest. The first thing we mentioned was the external rotation of this hip, the one that's coming into a half pad masana. But then on the other side, we have to have that ability to close that hip, flex that hip and try and sink it towards the ground. Now, for me, I was one of these people that thought it was, it's been a really tough journey for me, you know, over many years. Uh, and I put a lot of it down to proportions. I thought, ah, that hip will never go down. It's just the length of my shin to the length of my femur. Um, and that is something, there is something in that. Because if you've got a longer shin relative to your femur, then it will tend to lift up that uh, sit bone on that side. But I'm afraid we can't blame it all on that. There's a lot else going on and I've noticed over the years that my sit bone has been coming closer and closer to the ground as I've got more open. So I can't blame it all on proportion. But there will be an element of that and some people will find it easier than others. But one thing I find that really helps and, and Mark uh, Roberts is a great fan of this is the deep squat uh, for Mary Chesna A and also for, for most of them. So if we take uh, Carolina into a deep squat, just do like uh, and come through between your yeah, and come through between your arms and let your legs go up. So this amount of flexion that she's getting in the hip, it really helps to actually allow that sit bone to drop down. I feel when you're actually in the Mary Chastner. Um, so this sort of stuff is really good to do for many postures and will help you create a little bit more room in that flexed hip that we're actually bringing our half pad masana into. If we sit you back again and just look at what happens when we bring that foot in. So bring this uh, right foot into half pad masana again. And then bring that thigh up. Yeah, and let that drop down. Now at that stage, um, we don't want to see too much sickling of the ankle here. Um, and 
how comfortable you are will depend somewhat on how high that hip is because the higher it is the more acute this angle will be from this knee up and the more likely is there'll be some sickling here so what you want to try and do is actually keep it down as much as you can but also which will reduce that angle there now when it comes to the twisting bit Depending on the size of your rib cage, you can find that your rib cage is pressing up against your foot, between your foot and your thigh, which actually can create some resistance to you going further that way. So something, if you're built like a little bit like me, who's got quite a solid, rigid rib cage that seems to come down a long way, then it really helps to lift up and actually then rotate and try and get the heel of the foot into the soft belly. So that stops the, the foot getting in the way. And then from there, you can really begin to twist and get around that, uh, that leg. Yeah? And then this is the next important bit, is how you can actually get past of here in order to wrap around. And we have a tendency to want to lean forward, curve our back to then wrap around and go this way. But then from that position, we've got to try and straighten ourselves back up again. So it's like we've done that to get in it, but now it's providing us a bit of a hurdle to get straight. So if you can resist the amount that you actually curve forwards and try and keep up, rotate as much as you can, get around it, get in, then you haven't got so much to actually get back up again. So if Carolina wants to try getting in with sitting up as straight as she can, yeah, and then really wrap, yeah, and then binding here. Now, to me, she looks like she's already much straighter. And then what she's got to try and do is she's got to try and smooth all this out. So we want as much twisting to going on in the thoracic spine as possible because this is how we're built. This is where the twist needs to happen. So you want to stabilize in the lumbar area, twist from here. And then the other big thing is this drawing back of this backside shoulder and drawing the scapula down the back. Because as you open across the front of the chest, then you start getting really a lot more space to breathe and then from that we're lifting up through the head and then we're just rotating and then from this real stable base you can think about dropping that sit bone if it happens but all the time trying to protect this front knee because this is what's vulnerable is this front knee so we don't want it up too much in the air but it's that sort of balance between finding a real stable base from which you can actually lengthen up from. Good. So I think we've uh, tortured Carolina and Mary Chesson a D enough. I hope that helped and uh, join us again soon.